Welcome to the Journey to a Million podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Walker. This podcast is about my personal journey from being $25,000 in debt to getting to a million dollars of net worth by the age of 43. Follow along with my journey, implement the ideas, and let's do it together. Thanks so much for joining me. Let's get started. What's up out there, guys, and welcome to the Journey to a Million podcast. Today is Friday, November 19th, 2021. We are so close to Thanksgiving. I'm very thankful for that. Um, You know, I was definitely also thankful to wake up and see crypto rebounding today. Um, I was a little scared whenever last night and yesterday's kind of red day was happening. There was definitely blood on the streets. And, you know, I was like, man, like, you know, that fear creeps in and you're like, hey, like I know what it's supposed to do via the timeline, but it's just kind of scary. Uh, and it just kept going down yesterday. A lot of the Bitcoin, altcoins, everything, you know, it's almost everything was in a red day. I uh, woke up today and everything looked like it bounced a little bit. And so I was happy, very happy to see that. Um, so uh, I've been uh, checking out this guy, uh, Miles J Creative on Twitter. Uh, he definitely has like a good little aesthetic, little chart set up talking about the different um, cycles that have happened with Bitcoin in 2013 and 2017. Um, sorry, that's the one, my puppy there just sneezed when he came in. <laughs> uh, 2013 and 2017. Uh, talking about, you know, the a type of pattern that Bitcoin, Bitcoin has gone on when it's gone on its uh, parabolic run after the halving. And interestingly, uh, we've had like a pullback almost every mid-November, um, about 10 to 20 percent, you know, and it's interesting because that's kind of what we just went through the past couple of days and everyone was definitely fearful And I kind of looked at it and based on that, it's like you get that last pullback and then we have that blow off top moment. So I'm going to share my screen and show you guys um, what I'm looking at here. We're looking at coin market cap. And so Bitcoin is at uh, 57,781 as of today. So, you know, we came basically, we came down here yesterday and hit this 55K mark, mid 55s. And then you can see right here, we have this level of support and that's kind of where we bounced off of yesterday. So we're kind of holding that trend on a general way up. So you get that one pump, second pump, and then hopefully we get a third pump here. And every time like we kind of take that breather, that's when you get the next big run. You see, like we took a little breather right here, bounced up again, Um, then we came back down and corrected took a breather, bounce back up again. And then now we're like about to see that one more time where we take a little breather and then hopefully go parabolic. So based on what I've been looking at with his Bitcoin chart, it's really hard to tell because compared to 2017 and even of course 2013, you can't even really see um, where the bull run was back then comparatively. But in November of 2017, it's hard to really see, but we had like a move. We got up to about 7,500, something like that. And then we had a pullback down to about 6,300 or so. So it was like a 10 to 20% pullback there. And then all of a sudden we hit that big run from late November till um, almost January, basically, where Bitcoin hit 20K. And based on that, I think that's what we're about to see here. We're about to see that long extended run up with like, because we had our initial run up, then came back down, and then we're going to uh, go back up again. And then, well, according to his research, actually, we still have a little bit of ways to go before we hit that last pullback. I mean, it could either be where we are right now, or we could have just a little bit more of a run up here. Because it's like we're supposed to have a higher run up um, from the initial initial run. Anyway, it's tough to tell, but either we're about to go a little bit more and have like a twenty percent correction at that point, um, and then go on our blow off top, or we're going to just hit it whenever you know after we hit the support here at fifty five k and go up. So it's really difficult to tell. But interestingly, Bitcoin has followed very similar patterns on the 2013 and 2017 
uh, bull cycles. And I definitely think there's a lot uh, to be valued in that is that, you know, you're, I think um, you see a lot of the same patterns kind of going through um, with like stocks, nature, sometimes like there's just patterns with like the whole mania and the happening. And I think there's something to do with the code of Bitcoin. I don't know what it is. I can't really even put it into words, but I just feel like it's going to follow this pattern because it already has basically to the T twice. And now we're going through that same you know, thing for 2021 and 2022. Um, but I feel like we're about to see something crazy happen in the next, I'm just basically waiting from now until the end of December, I think we're going to see some kind of massive move. And I, I personally think it's going to go two to three X from here. And so we're going to hit somewhere in the 100 to 150, 180 range. I think some people are like Miles J is projecting 400 to 500. I don't know if I can see that based on, I think it's something to do with like the symmetry of everything is because, you know, in this, you went from 7,000 down to 6,000 and then you got to 20. So that's like a three X move almost, you know? And I think that's kind of what I would expect is you can see Bitcoin going up to a hundred thousand. And at that point, you'd really see people just going crazy and being like, all right, Bitcoin's at a hundred thousand. Like, let's, you know, put what we have into it. Like, let's, it's, it's going to keep going up. I don't want to miss out. You get that FOMO experience and then everyone starts piling their money in and market cap goes crazy. And at that time, people are just holding and exiting and ex like the people that are the smart money are starting to plan their exits around a hundred thousand plus and they just start scaling out. And then by the time more and more people have piled in, you know, all the smart money is starting to sell. And then at that point, you just get that fall off and hopefully too many, hopefully people aren't left holding the bag, but that's usually what happens is a lot of people are still trying to buy in at those tops because all they see is it's going straight up. They don't understand that this is not a great time to buy and they just don't want to miss out. And that's kind of what happens is you get that FOMO experience and then all the smart money sells. And then those people that bought in either sell or they just hold till the next time just to break even. So, you know, there's a lot of people who bought Bitcoin at 17K in 2017 and they're sitting pretty now but they weren't sitting pretty for a few years. So that's how it goes and uh, we'll see what happens. But that's my personal take. I'm kind of excited because I'm like, okay, November, December, the rest of it, like we could be in store for something insane because it's like in the past, it was like Bitcoin went from, you know, it's going to make the same percentage moves most likely, but the amount of dollars it's going to be going up is so much different because the move from 7,000 to 20,000 is one thing but then move from 55, 57,000 to a hundred to 200,000 is just like, it's, it's just more dollars, obviously. But yeah, so that's um, my personal take. If you guys want to look into it, I personally think this is a great uh, breakdown. It's miles M I L E S J uh, creative at, on Twitter. So check them out. See what you think. I think it's a very aesthetic um, research and well thought out and well done. So Based on that, um, I think the bottom for the next bear market should be in the 50 to 65,000 range. Um, so we'll see. But like I said, I'm still, you know, only been in this for a couple of years. And, um, you know, I'm still learning stuff every day, but I definitely think that's what I've been trying to do this whole bull run is kind of look at, okay, where are we in relation to 2017? Because I think we're going to follow similar patterns. And this guy is the first guy that's broken it down on that level where I've been like, okay, like everything seems to be following a similar pattern uh, numerically and by dates and stuff like that and percentages. So check them out. That's all I'll say on that. All right, guys, um, looking at our investing account. So last week we were at 1411.99 um, out of an initial 1000 that we invested. Remember, this is fake money, both the betting and the um, investing account. We're just doing this as an exercise. Have to say that every episode. So going into week 12 now, crypto is looking even better for our investing account. So it took us a while and we were down a couple hundred bucks. But I mean, honestly, all we did was set it and forget it. And we've been just checking it every week. Um, and as of this week, we're at $1,597.21. And we still have way more way to go. You know, uh, we're up almost 60% in 12 weeks. So go to someone in the stock market and say, hey, we need to find, we need to make 60% gains uh, in 12 weeks. What do you think? 
I mean, they're going to laugh at you. I think it can be done. Obviously there's people that are making a lot of money trading the start stock market, but, um, you know, like just a general investing uh, strategy, it's going to be fine to, hard to find 60% returns, you know, um, you know, over a long period of time, much less 12 weeks. So we're in it. And a lot of our coins aren't even pumping hard yet. Like we still have so much where we can like go up, like basically only one of our coins is even pumped and we're already up 60%. So uh ada cardano we're still waiting on that one to catch back up it's a 186 you know that's on me we bought in at a bad time there um 130 20 is what our value is on that for 70 cardano one solana pulled back yesterday now at 216.01 and then we have 200 mana which is our number one performer by far i think we got in at 80 something cents and now we're at four dollars and 13 cents per mana so that's a 5x basically uh, so we're at 826 bucks. So we invested a thousand initially for our whole portfolio. And now we're almost at a thousand for one of our picks. So, you know, that helps out the whole portfolio look good. XRP is still not doing much at basically what we bought in at 108. So we'll see if that uh, gets fixed. Uh, we have 260 XRP and then uh, StormX 5K at 0 0.029 is $145. Add all those up and you get 1,597.21. Cool. All right, so then in our imaginary betting account, we we would have been in a really bad spot if not for hitting that parlay last week. So looking at week 11, we were going down uh, $220 going into the week. And we took the Ravens minus seven and a half down to 0.5 on a seven point teaser, along with the Cowboys minus two and a half. Cowboys destroyed, you know, that was an easy W, but the Ravens lost outright to the Dolphins and that was a surprise game. So we lost 65 on that. And then Lions uh, tied the Steelers, and we just needed the Steelers to win by two, uh, along with the Bucks minus two and a half on that seven point teaser. And the Bucks lost to the Washington football team. So, you know, NFL's been kind of crazy the past few weeks, um, a lot of upsets. So, I think we've been losing a lot of our games. We're just taking chalk, and the games where we've been taking underdogs have been doing well. So, that's another 65 we lost. Um, and then we took the Panthers and the Cardinals. We took the Cardinals minus four, but the Panthers destroyed. Cam Newton looked good. Um, and then the Rams uh, were minus four. We made them plus three and we lost that one. Uh, Rams got destroyed 31 to seven. So, you know, but all these games, if we just take the underdogs, we're undefeated right now. <laughs> Easy. Um, so lost 65 on that one. And then we did win one teaser with the Browns and Patriots. We had that Patriots minus two. So we made them minus or plus five. Patriots destroyed. They've been a great team to bet on. I was going to take the Patriots last night against the Falcons, but I just didn't get the video done in time. So, you know, got to miss out on that one. I was going to have them in a teaser, probably unnecessary because they won 25 0. So, a good betting strategy this year would be just to bet on the Patriots because they've been um, underrated as far as how they've been performing the past few weeks. Um, Shout out to the Patriots. This is one of the only Patriots teams that I've actually been very into as I, I like the way they play. And, you know, now it's a new a new crew. And they're performing beyond their expectations. So that's nice. And then uh, we also had with that the Vikings plus three and a half. We moved them to plus ten and a half and they won their game outright 27 to 20. So we won 50 there. We also lost a parlay with the Seahawks and Packers over 49. That was a bad pick by yours truly. Uh, the Seahawks did not even score and Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers were both rusty as Aaron Rodgers was coming off uh, being sick with the virus. And then uh, Aaron or Russell Wilson was still rusty from his hand. So that was way under Falcons. Cowboys would have been a good pick on that over 54 and a half, but the Falcons just didn't show up. They got destroyed bucks in the Washington football team. I don't think that hit the over either. And the Bills Jets, I think that one did hit the over 48. Um, but yeah, so either way, we lost 50 on that one. But we did win a parlay. At that point, we were down, I think, like 245 going into that. So that would have been a rough week. Um, we'd have been down almost 500 total. However, uh, we took a four-team under parlay, 50 to 100. Saints and Titans under 44 and a half. And that one finished 23 to 21. That was super lucky because it was Saints were down by two, needed a two-point conversion, got a penalty, had to move it back five yards, I think, and then try to hit that two-point conversion, but didn't get it. So that's how the game ended 23 to 21, won by half a point right there. Super lucky. And then the Eagles Broncos, 30 to 13. That one hit the under 44 and a half. 
Then Jags Colts 23 to 17 Colts won, so that one hit the under 48. And then the Rams 49ers, I was like, man, we, I was watching that Monday night football game that I had imaginary money on. And I was just like, I definitely want to hit this. And it was 31 to 10 final score, 49ers surprised with the dominant defensive performance. So we ended up winning 255 on the week because we won that $500 parlay that combined with the fact that we were going into the week um, minus 220 puts us at plus 35 in our imaginary betting account. So you think we can get hot towards the end of the season and catch up to crypto? We're definitely going to have to keep taking parlays to do that because I don't think winning three and one weeks where we're in 100 bucks max is like really going to do that much for us. So, all right. So Lions, Browns, uh, we're going to take them and it's a seven point teaser. Uh, Browns are going to be moved down to minus four and a half from 11 and a half. And then the Titans are going to move from minus nine and a half to minus two and a half. I definitely think the Titans should take care of business at home against the Texans. Browns should take care of business against the Lions. I like the Browns in that game, even though the Lions have been frisky and we should probably take the underdog there. I kind of like the Browns just to dominate that game with the running performance. Um, I don't think if Jared Goff plays, he's been banged up. I don't see the Lions being able to hang with the Browns just because of the style of play. And I think the Browns defense is going to show up big in this one. So I'm taking the Browns minus four and a half there. All right. Ravens bears. This is kind of like a contrarian pick, but I'm kind of feeling both these mobile quarterbacks, Justin Fields and Justin or Lamar Jackson uh, being in this game. I think they're going to try to both show up in this one and, you know, try to play their best game, you know, more so than usual. It's like, you're playing a mobile quarterback. You are a mobile quarterback. You want to kind of prove that you can hang on his level. Justin Fields is, and then Lamar Jackson, you know, they came, they're coming off a bad offensive performance. Uh, so I think both these teams are going to want to show up on offense over 37 and a half is what I'm taking on this one. All right. And then this one's still a little risky because Aaron Rodgers is still could be a little bit, you know, coming back hundred percent. Uh, but he was struggling last week. But I do think when it comes down to it against the Vikings, he'll be able to put up points. Um, and I think the fact that it's in Minnesota in that indoor facility makes me like the over more. So I'm going to take it down from over 47 and a half to my over 40 and a half. And I think both teams will be able to put up about 20 points in this one at least. OK, and then uh, that was 65 to win 50 as well. All of these are uh, 65 to win 50 on the Colts bills under 49 and a half. We're going to move that up to under 56 and a half. Definitely think that's going to be a close defensive battle. Both teams are going to want to establish the run. Uh, yards are going to be hard to come by. I feel like in this game, I haven't checked the weather, but I imagine it's going to be cold in Buffalo. Combine that with that. I definitely like the under 56 and a half. Um, and then the Dolphins and Jets, we're going to put that as the other one. I was going to take the under, but the Jets defense has been so bad that it's really hard to kind of predict that one. I definitely think the Dolphins with the way they played last week going to um, play uh, in uh, New York. I think Joe Flacco starting. I just don't know if I, I see Joe Flacco really tearing it up in this game especially against the Dolphins defense, who's looked pretty good the past couple of weeks. So I'm going to take the Dolphins plus three and a half. The Jets have not, only, they've won, only won two games this year and both games were by a field goal. So I'm basically taking it for that reason. Dolphins plus three and a half. All right. And then um, 65 to win 50 as well on the Jags Niners. We're going to move that under from 45 and a half to 52 and a half. I think both teams are going to struggle to score in this game. I think the 49ers probably win the game. But the Jags have been frisky lately, and I could see it being a close, you know, 24 to 21 type game, maybe even less. Uh, and I think the 52 and a half under is going to be good there. And then this game, I could definitely see it being high scoring. And if the over hits, it wouldn't surprise me. But the Cowboys Chiefs over right now, our total is at 55 and a half. And <clears throat> I think that game could hit the over if it's a primetime game at uh, in Dallas or something. However, you know, I think both teams have a lot of firepower in this offensively, but I also think that when it's a big game like this, both teams are going to play a little bit more conservatively. Combine that with the fact that it should be about in the mid 40s during the game. I think I don't I don't see like I don't see the condition uh, conditions being conducive for offense in this game. So the totals at 55 and a half. Let's move that uh, under out to 62 and a half. And you tell me um Cowboys and Chiefs combined 35 to 28 final score and it hits over by half a point you know I'll take the loss on that that's I, I'm willing to roll the dice on that all right 
And then, you know, we got to take it one more parlay to see if we can hit it again two weeks in a row. Uh, so the Lions Browns, we're going to take the under 43 and a half just because it's supposed to be very cold and rainy and windy in Cleveland. Jared Goff has not played well in the cold weather in the past. He's very banged up in this game. I haven't really checked to see if he's even playing. Honestly, I think he is going to play. But I do think like the Lions are going to want to run the ball. I think the Browns are going to want to run the ball a lot. That combined with the conditions, let's just hope it stays under 43 and a half. All right, then you got the Texans at the Titans. Titans should dominate this game. Texans are just really bad. I do not like the fact that the Texans are off a bye week. Uh, but I think the Titans should be able to win by double digits here. So we're going to put them in at minus nine and a half. And then <clears throat> the Bengals Raiders over 50 and a half, excuse me. Um, Bengals and Raiders uh, both have shown like their defenses are really bad and their offenses are solid, but the defenses are not. Um, and I think both teams are going to be able to pass in this game. Both teams have shown the prevent propensity to have high scoring games. So I'm going to take the over 50 and a half on that. And then this one seems kind of risky, but the Cowboys and the Chiefs, Chiefs are minus two and a half. I think the Chiefs are, I, I, I mean, this is, they have not shown that they are one of the best teams in the AFC, but I do think last week's game that gave them some confidence. And I have not seen the Cowboys play. I don't, when it comes down to a game that's in the forties in Arrowhead stadium, Give me the Chiefs to win the game. Uh, give if they need to win by a field goal, but I think somehow they just find a way to do it. Like I don't know what it is. I just think when it comes down to it, you put the Chiefs in the cold weather at home versus the Cowboys on the road in the cold. I think the Chiefs are going to take care of business and get the win there. So if those four things hit, you know we'll be in a good spot again, and maybe we can catch up to the crypto because the crypto seems to be running away. Uh, but yeah, so we're taking a few a lot of risks and we're just trying to keep up at this point. So it's going to be a fun um, way to end the season here at, through November, December. And we'll see how our portfolios do against each other. But I know one thing, it's going to be a lot of action uh, either way. So that's about it for this week, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully we see uh, over the Thanksgiving week, um, Bitcoin uh, definitely take that next leg up. I don't know if there's going to be any more big pullbacks before we see that big run up, but, you know, take profits if you need to take about 10% off the table. If you feel like, you know, you're getting to a point where you, you're like, Hey, I'm happy here. Um, and let's see what happens from there. So like every week, maybe sell like 10 or 20% um, and see where you're at because, you know, once these pullbacks happen, you can lose 10 or 20% of your portfolio in a couple of days. That's not fun. Um, so just take your profits when you can. And then if it keeps going up, you're, you still have cash, you can jump back in if you want, but I like to get my, get my profits. And that way, when things are going crazy, you know, remember sometimes these exchanges aren't always able to make your sales happen when you need them to, when there's everyone trying to get in and buy more and more and more, you know, that's when you want to get out and it's not always, you know, sometimes the exchanges go down. So I definitely think you need to keep that in mind as we reach the close to the end of the bull run is that these exchanges might go down for a day. Um, so you don't want to be sitting there stuck and not being able to sell. So start to lever or cash out a little bit uh, when you can and enjoy the ride, guys. Happy holidays.